meaning of citizenship. Citizenship is the relationship between an individual and a state. The citizen owes allegiance to the state which gives an individual his nationality, his passport, his rights, duties and responsibilities which are embodied in the constitution and also secures him state protection. T. H. Marshall in Citizenship Kalas, Kalas 1950 observed that citizenship implies full and equal membership of a political community. Was it possible to have equality in acquiring as, men as mentioned in the definition? It was difficult because of existing hierarchies of class, caste, sex, religion and race. Time, age of time, age of time, there was a demand for universal and egalitarian outlook to citizenship and therefore it is an evolving concept. Hence, at different periods of history, the term citizenship has extended to more persons and led to liberation from oppression. Thus, equality and integration within the political community became the mantra of citizenship. The word citizenship is derived from Latin civics and its Greek equivalent polities which means member of the polis. Historical development of the concept of citizenship. The concept of citizenship has developed through four stages of historical periods. First, the classical period. Second, the late medieval and modern, modern period. Third, the influence of liberalism and capitalism. Fourth, the influence of multiculturalism and community rights. In the four stages of historical periods, two important points can be put forward. First, civic republicanism, which emphasizes on common good, political participation, and public spirit. Second, liberal citizenship, which emphasizes on individual rights and private interest. First, the idea of citizenship can be traced to ancient Greek city-states. The city-states like Athens and Sparta were exponents of the classical institution of citizenship, which was based on civic republicanism, which means Athens and Sparta were self-governing political units with small population and minimum social differentiation. These conditions were ideal for people to realize their natural selves. Thus, citizenship provided a platform for securing freedom to participation in civic life. Citizenship was limited to those people who could participate in the process of governance. Thus, citizenship was granted to people who were competent to participate in judicial and deliberative functions. Without these qualities, a person could not be a complete and good citizen.
Thus, citizenship was a bond between a person and city-state. In Greek city-states, women, children, slaves and foreigners were not citizens. According to Aristotle, these sections were excluded because they did not have the moral or intellectual excellence and could not afford leisure and economic and mental development. Thus, classical, no classical notion of citizenship emphasized on freedom and participation of a few people, but many were excluded from participation in governance. Second, to hold together a large and diverse population of the Roman Empire, several graduated levels of citizenship were introduced. Thus, it brought large number of people who were ethnically different from Romans under the protection of uniform Roman laws. It was an important step in the process of Romanization. This was essential in order to prevent revolt from the conquered people. It gave the people under its rule a feeling that they were a part of the system. Roman women had limited form of citizenship. That is, they had no right to vote or stand for public office, but had the right to own property and to have business. Slaves had no rights, but over time they acquired few rights under the Roman law. Thus, Greeks' idea of citizenship was active, while the Roman idea of citizenship was as which means which means the citizen was no longer the protector of law but was under the protection of law but the romans believed that citizens were required to develop qualities of civic virtues like military duty and obedience to law in the 16th century, the notion of citizenship as a legal status became dominant. The establishment of authority in the hands of monarchs who enjoyed absolute powers, a citizen came to be defined as one who enjoys the common liberty and protection of authority as said by Jean Baudin. Thus a citizen was under the protection of the state and not an authority. Thus citizenship stood for common liberty and not for common public responsibilities and civic virtues. So for early modern liberals, what was to be protected was one's physical life. For example, for Hobbes it was family, home for Badam, and for Locke it was property. Thus passive citizenship prevailed, that is citizens were not political. But the need for active citizenship also prevailed among the 16th and 18th century thinkers. For example, Montesquieu's state was based on the principle of popular participation and the stability of such a state depended on the practice of civic virtues of its citizens. Rousseau believed that civic virtues and participation were necessary elements 
of citizenship. He viewed the acceptance of the general will by the citizens as their contribution for the common good. Machiavelli upheld the ideals of civic virtues of classical republicanism. He believed that people should be alert to their civic obligations. This was possible through education and religion. The fear of the consequences of not performing their citizenship duties. Good citizenship was not only essential for a secure state and republican government but was possible only in a republic. He expressed unhappiness over the fact that few Italian states followed the ancient republic and also had fewer men of good virtues. Thinkers like James Harrington and John Milton upheld the need for active citizenship. The glorious revolution of 1688 and the American Revolution of 1776 was in this direction. The French Revolution of 1789 was a revolt against passive citizenship, thus reviving republican republicanism, that is, to transform the apolitical lives of citizens. The French Revolution introduced the concept of rights into the notion of citizenship. It also introduced the system of horizontal rights as against the hierarchical system of privileges, thus declaring citizen as a free and autonomous individual. The revival of civic republicanism and its association with the idea that the citizen as an autonomous and rational person was due to nationalism which paved the way for a democratic conception of citizenship and redefined the social political unity. Thus the group which aspires for unity and sovereignty should be free from external interference and internal divisions to frame its own rules and establish its own institutions according to its needs. Third, in the 19th century, the rise of liberalism gave rise to market relations which brought a new notion of citizenship. It dismantled the feudal socio-economic structures where an individual was subservient in the socio-economic hierarchies. In this new environment emerged individual rights and individual mobility in society to e due to equality among citizens and the national political autonomy. T. H. Marshall, Equal and Universal Citizenship. T. N. Marshall, in a citizenship and social class, written in 1950, analyzed the growth of citizenship in England since the 18th century. He pointed out three stages of development of rights associated with citizenship. The first stage, civil rights evolved in the 18th century, which included rights necessary for individual freedom, such as freedom of speech, movement, movement, faith, equality before law, and right to own property. The second stage, 
political rights evolved in the 19th century which included rights necessary to participate in the political process such as right to vote contest for elections hold public office thus it established universal franchise democratic government and equality the third stage social rights evolved in the 20th century which included rights to live a civilized life according to prevailing standards in society such as right to a certain standard of economic and social welfare and the right to a full share in the social heritage t and marshall believed that public institutions can take care of these rights that is the judiciary can protect the civil rights the representative institutions can protect the political rights and the social services and so schools can protect the social rights Marshall defined citizenship as full and equal membership in a political community. We can observe two points. Firstly, presence of horizontal equality as opposed to hierarchical inequalities. Secondly, integration brought excluded and marginalized sections of the people into the fold of citizenship this brought about integration provided identity and a feeling of belongingness to the political community within common culture and social heritage fourth in the 1980s the rise of notions like multiculturalism plurality diversity and minority rights gave rise to the need for retheorizing citizenship that is to accept the cultural differences among individuals and to strike a balance between religious linguistic and ethnic groups while drawing a common political identity of the citizens of the nation differentiated citizenship defined as the granting of special group based legal or constitutional rights to national minorities and ethnic groups the traditional concept of citizenship ensured equal rights for all citizens but ethnic religious and linguistic groups felt excluded from the common rights of citizenship that is the principle of equal rights did not translate into social justice and equality for all citizens as a result theorist argued that different groups can be accommodated into common citizenship by adopting what Iris Marion Young in 1989 called differentiated citizenship which means that members of certain groups should be accommodated not only as individuals but also through their group and their rights could partially depend upon their group membership this special treatment is necessary to make it possible for their participation in decision making process as citizens on one hand differentiated citizenship helps the marginalized to realize their full potential of the citizenship and on the other hand special treatment leads to emphasizing their difference and oppression 
due to similar factors like multiculturalism, diversity, and minority rights, the concept of equality too needed to be redefined. Will 1996 provided a framework in which the demands of minorities, groups, ethnic groups may be accommodated within a framework of democratic citizenship. A. By protecting the common rights of all citizens, that is, protection of civil and political rights of individuals, freedom of association, religion, speech, and political organization for protecting group differences. B. By accommodating cultural diversity through special legal and constitutional measures with members of specific groups being guaranteed special rights. Will developed three forms of group and different types of rights for each, that is, group differentiated rights. A. Self-government rights. B. Polyethnic rights. C. Special representation rights. A. Self-government rights to indigenous people and national minorities are recognized even if they are coercively incorporated into the large state. Such rights may be possible in the federal structure. For example, recognizing political autonomy of Quebec. B. Polyethnic rights to immigrant communities who demand protection preservation and support from the state to preserve their distinct entities. These groups are not rejecting integration, nor are they demanding for collective self-determination. What they are demanding is exemption and accommodation from certain laws and regulations. For example, Jews sought exemption from Sunday closing. Muslim girls in Britain and France have asked for wearing hijab along with school dress code. Muslims have demanded to replace civil codes by religious codes. Jews in USA have sought to wear the yamuluka during military service. C special representation rights to national and ethnic groups as well as non-ethnic categories that is women, poor and disabled. It is an attempt to democratize the structures of the state by making it more representative. For example, providing more seats in legislature or in government office or employment to the above categories. This helps in reducing oppression and provides opportunities for self-determination. Will believes that cultures are valuable to individuals for two reasons. Firstly, cultural membership is an important condition of personal autonomy. Secondly, cultural membership is important for people's self-identity. The emphasis on multiculturalism is not only to correct the historical wrongs or the removal of discrimination, but the belief that the culture of these communities have valuable elements that can be shared and learned from. As a result, the political community is viewed as a shared public space where equality is a significant norm. Secondly, 
another contribution of multiculturalism theory of the theory of citizenship has been that it has altered the way in which political community is seen that is from homogeneous to heterogeneous this heterogeneity is essential for a democratic setup the proponents of multiculturalism reject the idea of melting pot in which members of the minority groups are expected to assimilate into the dominant culture instead emphasis is on the idea of a salad bowl